Okay, Addis Maximus here, this time with another camera teardown, this time on the Kodak Easy Share C143. I haven't done one of these videos in a long time. We're going to do a full teardown. Kind of dug myself a hole when I've done a few of these teardowns earlier, mainly because, uh, I mean, it's not the normal kind of videos that most of my normal subscribers, I would say, would like. I mean, I do mainly tool reviews. But I did enough of these where there are people who just love a particular model of camera and just have some kind of little thing they need to fix or they got in another one and they're kind of would like to see generally how these things kind of come apart so they have just a better idea and or will be a little bit more successful in their attempted repair. And you might wonder why in the era of cell phones, it isn't just people who just prefer old school pocket cameras, but a lot of them have some type of sentimental value. We do have those three screws at the bottom, a couple on the side. Maybe it was the camera that they took their, you know, kids' first steps on or their wedding photos. Or maybe uh, that camera stopped a bullet and saved their life. Or maybe uh, helped contribute to uh, world peace and, uh, you know, infinite lifespans. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? they do like them and I've gotten enough random comments to where it's like uh, you know I ought to do some more of these I've been building them up um, when I find them for super cheap like less than five bucks I haven't ever tested I assume a lot of them do work well we even have more screws on this side this one is a 12 megapixel with a 3x I mean this is a really lightweight cheesy camera but it's probably the kind of thing that there's still a fair number of them out there anyway it's also just kind of a wonder of engineering for how expensive so many things are particularly like hand tools snap-on ratchets the amount of engineering that even goes into a cheap camera is exponentially more than a snap-on ratchet and a lot of these are just sold for dirt cheap so we do have just a little bit of separation of the case here I don't see anything else on top don't see anything else on the bottom so it's going to be some kind of thing where there's going to be some tabs kind of trying to hold the top of it together so I bet if we separate it a little bit yep get a little bit of prying going on there lift those tabs up whoop we did lose a little piece I see what this is this is a little light pipe that went right under the flash and actually the whole face comes off once you do that this was a camera it uses standard SD card double-a batteries which I always kind of like because they're easier to deal with than the rechargeables although admittedly the rechargeables are lighter weight hold more energy uh, they are better as a power source we do have a little plastic lens over the flash there I don't keep the parts from these cameras it's just usually I just end up keeping the little screws because those are would end up being useful. These are my ancient rigid USA uh, precision screwdrivers. I probably got 20 years ago at Home Depot. We do have a little screw hidden up in the corner here. That's what's keeping the other uh, case half together. But if you really are careful with your precision screwdrivers, you won't strip them out. And these rigids, I mean, they've lasted a long, long time. And wow, that just pops off easy. Interestingly enough, you can see that they have like a UV or anti-glare coating for the plastic window that's covering the screen, which is kind of interesting because, to tell you the truth, that window could be replaced if it gets really scratched up without having, and the screen itself stays in good condition. So this is just a conductive weave right here that's kind of looping around. We do have one more little screw there, and it appears the rest of it's actually kind of held together with a lot of clips. I mean, when they're cheap, one of the things they're going to do is minimize the number of screws and other components. And I have some obviously much denser and much nicer cameras disassemble, but or and have in the past as well. And that's where the you know they just are increasingly complex. Whoop need this to where's my little one there it is we have another tab here and that will whoop and I've got this sticky thing there we go 
we do have a little ribbon connector up here by the buttons. I was looking for a little flippy thing. This one's just low tension and it has a bit of reinforcing, so that one actually isn't held together via ribbon. Same with this one, but this one is a little, this one has a little flip latch there. We can pull that off. And that's actually the screen replacement if you need to do that. That's the screen and the buttons all in a tight little module there. Battery door still held on pretty well. There's the brains of the operation. We have like a little, I guess, protective film here. We have our two-stage uh, photo button. So it's actually two concentric buttons, one on top of the, uh, each other. So what you have is you have like a little button like this, and then another specially designed one that goes over the top. And when you press down, you're, you engage the upper outer one. When you press a little bit harder, it engages the lower inner one. That's how you get the partial press to focus and then hard press to um, actually have it take the photo. A few more screws in here, including this one on top. And the reason I keep all the little screws of this stuff that I take apart is if you ever lose one of these screws from some other kind of service um, or it's just missing from some other piece of electronics or whatever, these tend to be just the hardest screws to ever find if you need a replacement. But if you take apart enough random stuff, one thing I'm noticing here, this, oh, I need to try to get these all in the frame. There we go. I'm noticing that every screw is actually the same size. It's <laughs> not an Apple product. So now I gotta figure out how to well, flip those up, make sure there's no other screws under there. What is exactly holding this kind of whole assembly? It looks like there may be some in place soldering. This uh, photo or the picture button is actually trick is both a double actuator button and the zoom control all in one little integrated unit and there is they've actually soldered these wires to the flash capacitor after they kind of wrapped it around and installed the motherboard we'll try releasing the camera lens here and see if we can kind of get it to cooperate but this is not designed to it looks like you can replace the screen because that is probably something that it would be most the most likely item to be replaced Everything else in the, of course, the the body or the housing. But I'm kind of getting the feeling that this whole thing um, will definitely need would need some solder work, and they wouldn't actually warranty that they'd just replace this. Or in reality, on one of this sheet, this give you a whole new camera. Yeah, you can use your thumb and just pop out this lens assembly, but the rest of this motherboard. Um, including the wires that are, what is this? Oh, for the speaker and for the microphone that's up in front are also like soldered on after assembly. So this is essentially about as far down as it goes for that. And then we do have the lens assembly here, which I always kind of like taking apart. There's a the motor for the zoom. We always got some interesting screws that get these lens assemblies apart pull those out always kinda like taking stuff apart just because it's a little bit of an exploration and a slight kinda technical challenge one where you don't have, I mean I I don't know about other people but I'm not as good at getting things back together as I am at taking them apart so most of the screws are all the same size when it comes to the housing general purpose assembly screws of course dealing with the actual lens element here there's going to be some specially shaped screws and I'm just going to pull all of them out of here that's some little weird clip and I like a little I guess that's a heat sink a little backing plate I don't know if uh, those are also additional screws. 
They are. They're just black for some reason. And were difficult to identify. They almost looked like melted over plastic pegs that were holding on this little heat sink here for the actual CCD element itself. And surprisingly enough, that's actually pretty serviceable. Just pull out four screws and you can replace the entire CCD element. Contrary to popular belief, the CCD arrays, and this is a great example, actually do still have glass over. I mean, it isn't the microchip is just exposed to the atmosphere. A lot of people with like the mirrorless cameras where you pull off the, you know, expensive ones where you pull off the lens and it looks like you're, I mean, you are looking right at the sensor element, but not the raw one. This is still something that could be with the appropriate cleaning cloth cleaned. And there it is. Kodak is actually the company that first patented the CCD and it was just way too early. I think it was like back in the 1970s. And basically they had figured out CCD and patented it maybe a little too early because by the time manu microelectronic manufacturing had caught up to actually make decent resolution CCDs at Ray's, Kodak's patent had ran out. So it's just kind of a shame that even though they not were only known for chemical film, traditional film, but also for, you know, technically bringing us the digital camera uh, and the fact that, I mean, as far as CCD rays and all the security cameras, cell phones, there's probably tens of billions of CCD-based cameras that have been made, and uh, Kodak just missed out. Super unfortunate. Everything else in this lens array is going to be the mechanics for its operation tiny little sensor right there that senses that little piece of metal getting closed probably knows what allows it to know that the lens is closed or at minimum zoom and then down here in this section we actually have a gate sensor so there's actually an infrared LED transmitter and receiver in that little fork and it's just detecting um, so one of these is the lens closed and maybe one of them is zoom extent or zoom limit sensor there's a clip here and that's what was tricking me and to kind of figure, well, there goes one of the gears. In order to transfer power from this little motor, they have these little set of gear boxes so it can interact with this ring here. So when you turn that ring, well, it's kind of being funky on me. There we go. That's kind of, that ring is kind of what determines Maybe it'll work a little bit better. There we go. So when the ring turns, that's what's both... Come on now. <laughs> that's what's both pushing a lens out and controlling the zoom via tapered tracks that are inside there. We have our housing. There's one of our little gears. There's the rest of the gearbox. So it's a little worm drive, which gives you a whole bunch of extra torque and a very compact space and then I'm trying to figure out what these last sensors are I think one of them has to do with the iris so it's not a sensor it's an iris uh, activation or control and one may be dealing with autofocus this last portion here these little pegs that are part of the whole guide system for the telescope are actually just press fit in there but come on camera I mean, the size of these, there's my index finger. The size of those parts, and those are precision machine parts. Those are made on what's known as a switch screw machine, which is a particular piece of CNC or computer controlled manufacturing equipment that is specifically designed for making real precise, super tiny parts like this. And those machines obviously when you're making parts this size they have to pump out a heck of a lot of them in order for them to pay themselves off so indeed this one ribbon is for the iris control there I actually see some more screws so maybe we can even get inside that and then what we'll see is our secondary motor and so that secondary motor is what's going to be controlling the focus and to correct myself or further elaborate black screws inside the whole lens assembly because obviously anything reflective like reflective screws can end up producing flares 
on the photos that you're taking. It still is amazing the machinery also that has to assemble because these things aren't hand assembled. It would take way too long for the number of precision parts that are inside one of these things. So there's part of the lens. And then here is our little iris, if we can somehow figure out how to get it apart. Tore off the little wires. You can see the little electromagnets. Pretty interesting here. I don't think I've actually ever shown this quite properly. You can see that's magnetic. This electromagnet goes around a fork. And what's happening there is this little piece. Oh, there's our fork. This little piece acts as a motor, and so when you when it adjusts the iris, it runs the motor, and this little lever rotates around back and forth, engaging in a little piece in here in order to open and close the iris, which I can't even see. There we go. This is how the motor would work. So when the magnet charges, this little lever moves around to adjust the iris. Pretty kind of kind of cool super tiny motor here's our iris it won't operate properly because i took it apart but see there's the little hole where that would act those little motors and so when they actuate they end up causing these leaves to open up i don't know if that's also the shutter at the same time it may be anyway thanks for watching my little teardown video to tell you the truth they're one of the more enjoyable videos for me to make to, uh, i like making videos about hand tools but it's just gotten so difficult for me to find more unique ones and I need to do there's a lot of requested videos but I need to get around to putting together more comparisons but in the meantime for me it's just a nice video to chat and take something apart and explore some interesting mechanics anyway thanks for watching